So I have the great fortune of spending time with lots of incredible business owners. I work very closely with people who are in the Inc. 5000 community. These are fast-growing companies in America, private companies. And they're usually owned by a few, one or a few people. When you study these companies, where vast amounts of all good things are happening, wealth creation is happening, job creation is happening, uh, innovation is happening, you find as you look more closely at these companies that it's not innovation the way it's often characterized you know, on TV or whatever. The idea of a couple people tinkering in a garage and coming up with the next big thing, or these days it wouldn't be so much a physical thing, it would be the next big app or whatever they would develop. Wow, that does not show up much on the Inc. 5000. I mean, I could talk to you piece by piece why that vision of tinkering with something, VC, venture capitalists, plow money into it, next thing you know, you're standing on the NASDAQ floor and you're going public. That is beyond rare in, in, real, in real wealth creation. Really what happens over and over again are that people who work in large companies start smaller companies. So this is a scenario we're all familiar with. You work at a large company. It may be a field you didn't know about before when you were young. You know, no one ever said, "I want to," you know, sell light bulbs for a living. But uh, you end up in a large company, and you realize that that large company has a few problems. One is it might be ignoring a few small markets because it's such a big company and those markets aren't big enough. And two is it's not nimble anymore. And so what you do is you say, you know, "I've been here for ten years. I understand this market. I see there's a niche here that they're not serving." Let me get out of this company. Let me start a small company. We're going to be nimble. We're going to be you know, quick to change. And we're going to make this little niche product here that no one else is really looking at. And I already know who to talk to about it. I already know who to sell it to. And boom, you've got yourself an Inc. 5000 company. So these are companies that are not innovating in the sense of you know, sitting there all night saying, what's the big idea? What's the big idea? What's the big idea? They're actually coming up with very simple ideas. But where they really um, you know, make note of what they're doing is in the way they execute. And so imitating, not innovating, is where real business happens and real, and real wealth creation happens. Imitating is taking an idea, you know, differentiating it a little bit, maybe painting it a different color, coming up with a different way to handle it, maybe serve a different market than anyone sees. But execution is everything. What we see in this startup economy are people who have this vision that they're going to create it, they're going to upload it, and then, you know, boom, everyone's going to find it. The truth of the matter is um, you have to work hard to create an organization that actually sells a product, that actually explains the product to the marketplace, actually justifies and defends why that product is valuable. You know, I'm charging you $100 for this, and it's worth $100. That's the day in, day out of execution. Um, and so these are businesses that imitate, they don't innovate. The story in the book that I use to describe this is, again, we're starting with the framework of there's the conventional wisdom and then there's what really happens. The conventional wisdom is that Bill Gates, the founder of Microsoft, was a visionary. He saw things happening before anyone else. The reality of it is, and this is a story that has been told but has never really been captured, is uh, actually there was a lot of people already working on the disk operating system, the, the software that runs computers. Gary Kildall. Gary Kildall created one that was really, that, that worked, actually was considered a high quality product. But Gary Kildall was such an innovator, he was such a perfectionist, he was such an artist with his code, that when IBM came calling in the, in the 80s and said it's time for us to use these in our IBM computers and let's make a deal, he, he just couldn't put the deal together because he kept saying I need more time. I need more freedom, I need, I need to be an artist, not a business person. And in the meantime, IBM said, well, what about you, Bill? And he said, I can do it. And he had no idea what he was going to do. He found a lousy version of the operating system that was also floating around Seattle. He took it, he worked very hard on it, he has all his developers trying to make something out of it, and he sold a lousy product to IBM, which they went on to fix over, uh, over the years. That's a story not of innovation, but of imitation. Uh, and really the real story behind Bill Gates and the thing we can learn about this is that it's the way you construct your deal with your, with your partners or with your customers that's, the, that's you know, where the real execution and innovation takes place. Uh, Bill Gates is credited with a phrase, it's hard to know if he actually said it, but he's credited with this phrase, you don't get what you deserve, you get what you negotiate. So execution of simple ideas really, really well, excellent execution, is by far more responsible for wealth creation than the, the garage startup dream.